Brought to you by DigiKey. This week is Rich Tech, your power partner. Hey, Data, what is the IMPI, the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, to no one's surprise, uh, it's a power chip from Rich Tech. Um, they're really good at making power chips. So this week it's the RT6160A. It looks like this is a very small chip with, uh, you know, BGA uh, mounting. It's designed to be very small. But uh, don't let the size fool you. This is a very powerful chip. So it's a very uh, interesting and very useful um, kind of all-in-one power supply management chip that you could use for, especially something wearable that uses batteries. It's a three amp output buck boost converter, which is like a massive amount of current, or sorry, the switch I think is probably three amps, which means um, still you can get, you know, an amp of load or, or more. And it's a buck boost, which means it runs from as little as 2.2 to 5.5 volts. And then the output can be kind of anywhere between two and five volts also. So you like 2.8, 3, 3.3, 3.5 volts are all valid. Um, and you can use the I2C interface that has to configure the voltage output. So you can dynamically change it. You don't have to use resistors to, to fix the voltage. If you want, you could start running your, you know, code at 3.3 volts and then you can drop it down to 2.8 later um yeah it has sorry it does have up to three amps of output current um especially in buck mode it's going to do great for that uh, boost mode it's 2.5 amps max but still a huge amount of current and um an amazingly low quiescent um uh current of one microamp non switching and i think another one or two like two microamps total typical quiescent current which is like unbelievably low even most ldos don't go really below like 10 microamps so um you know amazingly low quiescent current high current and high efficiency output and it's configurable over i squared c so it kind of does everything you need in a power supply chip um you know a lot of people ask me like when would you use a buck boost converter versus an ldo and i use ldos all the time and in particular i use the um rt9080 a lot which i'll, I'll show in a second uh which is a ldo from um rich tech and you know the ldo stands for low dropout because basically you have the input on the left and they have this power mosfet that you kind of turn on and off you know with this op amp circuit in the in the middle and you basically, you know, tweak the amount of voltage on the FET until the output is um, the voltage you want. So VN always has to be above V out. So you can have five volts in and you could have 3.3 volts out. But then all that current in between is is burned off as heat like that 1.7 volt difference. You have to dissipate that out. And so it's good for like, you know, uh, low current, low efficiency, because you maybe don't care you're running on a battery and you don't you know, you don't want to have the space with the expense of a buck boost converter. Um, as long as the V in is pretty close to the V out, maybe, you know, the dropout is so minimal, maybe it's still within 90% efficiency and low noise. Like I mentioned that I really like the RT9080. Uh, this is like a go-to LDO for our low cost boards where we don't have a buck or a boost converter. Um, and what's nice about this board is it's got, again, very low quiescent current, like five microamps or less, which means on this itsy bitsy esp32 here uh, if you look on the left you can see in deep sleep mode the esp32 is you know maybe five to seven microamps and the ldo is three microamps it's just an unbelievably low current compared to like other chips which we use like the ap2112 which has like 50 microamps of current which just makes a big difference it's like it basically means you get five times as much runtime in deep sleep as you would um, so a lot of people, when they're designing wearable or uh, portable projects, they're going to be powering stuff off of a, um, oh, sorry, I can move to the, this is loud. That goes in the eye. Yeah, so uh, I just want to make sure we don't, we don't skip ahead. Um, they're usually running off of a uh, lithium polymer battery. So the lithium polymer battery, um, they're called 3.7 volts, but really, you know, they have a nominal of, of 3.7, but they start at, um 4.2 it depends a little bit on, on the temperature as well and the uh drainage so here this is that see here is the drain rate so assuming you have a low drain rate um 0.2 of you know if it's a 1000 milliamp hour that means it's your 0.2 times the milliamp hour in milliamps is the the rate so if you're drawing like 200 or 100 milliamps or less on average 
Um, you start at 4.2, which is well above 3.3 volts where you normally use it. But then as you kind of uh, drain more current, especially high current, um, the voltage droops quite quickly. And then you very fast get close to 3.3 volts or even below. As you see, even, you know, especially if you're doing spikes of current because you have like a, a radio or you have a motor, um, you can quickly have the voltage of the battery dip below your 3.3 volts nominal voltage and it'll go down to 3.1 or 3 but there's still plenty of capacity and current inside so you want to use something like a buck boost so when the voltage of the battery is above 3.3 volts you'll buck it down and you use an efficient buck converter so you're not losing any of that uh, dropout voltage and then if it's below 3.3 you'll boost it up and a really nice design as you see here it's all inclusive so you'll need one inductor um you know, as a generic example you need one inductor input capacitance output capacitance and then a resistor divider to set the output voltage um, these chips tend to be more expensive than just a buck or a boost and they you know oftentimes uh, have a little bit more complexity but what I, what I really like about the rt6160 is how simple it is like this application you know usage schematic it's like you really just need an inductor. It needs to be a big inductor. You need input capacitance, output capacitance. And you don't need a resistor divider because the default output is 3.3 volts. And then you have, you know, a couple GPIO lines for uh, I squared C configuration, um, enable and uh, signal. The signal is what determines that I'll show you later. There's two voltages you can switch between. And of course, enable takes it into low power mode. So not a lot of pins, not like there's no like strapping capacitors and like feed forward da, 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 da. and then compare it to the TPS series. Um, the quiescent current here is two to five microamps compared to 15 to 25. So for deep sleep, it's going to make a really big difference. Um, okay. And then it is a uh, BGA. It's a WLCSP. Uh, it's very small. This is designed for like, obviously like very tiny circuits. Um, I can definitely see it being used for audio circuits where sometimes you, or, you know, like I said, motors, radios, uh, where you sometimes need to connect over Wi-Fi. You have a burst of 500 milliamps or one amp of current, um, but otherwise it's going to be um, very low current sipping and you want to maximize that battery because by using a buck boost with this low quiescent, um, and I'll show you the configurable battery, you can really like get that last five, 10% of battery life out um, without harming the battery. Um, but keeping your circuitry running. Um, one thing just to note is, you know, it's not a wide range input output. It is, you know, basically two to five volts in, two to five volts out. Um, the output current is three amps, which is a lot. Just, you know, make sure that your battery supports that. That's a huge amount of current, especially if you're boosting it. I think of the boost, like I said, it's 2.5 amp. That's still a lot. Um, you know, th that could be sucking four amps out of your battery. So obviously if you're using, you use this for RC circuitry, um, but you know, a small battery won't be able to provide that you, you need, you know, one of those like 18650 or something batteries. Okay. Next up, I squared C is really simple. There's a couple stats, or, you know, there's a device you can read and then there's a V out one and V out two register. I think these are all 16 bits wide. And so you can set the output, you know, like why is there two outputs? Because you actually will switch between them, which makes sense. Because usually you would set this up to have like 2.8 volts and 3.3 volts and then use a GPIO to like immediately switch between the two voltages. Uh, this means that when you want to go into a different mode, you don't have to send the I squared C signal over and over again. You just switch back and forth. So when you're doing the radio or you're doing the motor, you can go back up to 3.3 volts or you need or 3.5 or 4 volts. And then when you're not using this like high voltage, high power peripheral, you bring it back down. And then if you have a microcontroller that has clock, you, know, you can PLL adjust the clock, combine that, you could have your microcontroller running as at little as 2.5 or 2.3 volts. And at a lower frequency, you can save a ton of current while still keeping your microcontroller running. So a lot of power savings can be squeezed out uh, by using this chip. Um, here's the layout. One thing I like is it is a BGA, but at least you don't have to like get signal out from um the middle you can use this i mean they have a you know four layer board here but it's it's not a bonkers four layer boards like you're not using any uh look doesn't look like you need any um bird vs for it well of course you can and then there's an eval board available so ready to go 
uh, input output and all the configurations on little uh, test clip uh, leads. So if you want to get started, all this stuff is in stock at DigiKey. That's right. And for a good price, it's like a, less than a dollar fifty in quantity. Um, it's amazing for a buck boost converter, three amp output. Okay. And that is I am a piano. I am a piano.